Well, it was nice. It's still time for me to go to church, to the sunny side home. But I think it was awfully nice to have this opportunity to show a little bit. One has to wonder if it's possible to capture a lifetime of compassion, of kindness and dedication in just a few photographs and film clips. After reading about Peter and Johanna Voss, I realized this is a story all of us should better understand. It's a story of hard work, faith and perseverance, and it's about the importance of community. The two immigrants from the Netherlands would come together to help lay the foundation for a great Kitchener organization today known as Sunbeam Community and Developmental Services. When World War II broke out, Johanna was just starting her nursing career in Holland. Young Peter was working on a farm nearby. The two would lay witness to the horrific Nazi occupation of the Netherlands. The experience would teach them both to always be thankful for what you have. After the war, Johanna would take a nursing position in Suriname. Peter would find himself there as well after telling his parents that it was God's calling for him to do missionary work. The two connected and discovered their common passion. At such a young age, the pair never let their negative experiences affect their positive outlook on life and of people. They would marry in June of 1948. Shortly thereafter, they would find themselves seeking a new life in Canada. Their first few years were difficult, but they worked hard and made many great connections with the Salvation Army and the Mennonite community in Waterloo Region. The couple would go on to have six of their own children and at one time approximately 300 more children under their care. I sat down with John, Jane and Peter Voss to learn about why their parents started Sunbeam and just how they became so successful. Sunbeam Home is a story about serving people. That's all my parents wanted to do. Sunbeam was a calling for my mom and dad. It was not, let's start a business. It was the intention of wanting to do something that they, that they didn't think they could do, but they felt driven to do because it was all about serving God through our own efforts. After a lot of hard work, the Vosses were able to get their first home in Kitchener. It was November 9th, 1956 when they took in their first child. Peter would convert the garage to a nursery and the home would eventually accommodate an impressive 20 children in that small space. Jane Voss recalls those first days. They, they brought a little child to the door one, one time um, on Frederick Street and uh, my mom said that he was staying with us. So I think we just had the normal kind of questions like, well, where did he, why is he staying? Like, where did he come from, you know? And where's he gonna sleep? You know, just normal. Like, it wasn't like you, you worried about it. You just thought that's something new in our house. We were uh, just kids, young kids. And of course, my parents had to get rid of us now and then when they were busy. So they would put us in, in the playhouse, called the playhouse. And we would just play with the kids. And we didn't know anything different about them. They were just they were just our friends and we played with them and they played with us and that's just how life was. It was great. And uh, it wasn't until years later that we realized that there's, these kids are, are special. The Voss has had a lot of support and guidance, but perhaps none more important than Kitchener native Dr. Siegfried Kegler. Dr. Kegler committed to doing everything he could for children who were institutionalized. He had a strong belief that it was best to move patients out from the infirmaries and back into the community. Dr. Kegler was um, uh, very interested in researching that and the, the medical portion of how to help these children. And, and he knew that my mother and father would be good candidates. Dr. Kegler was a remarkable man who <clears throat> I remember he would come in, he was, he was Mormon, we were Christ, uh, Christian Salvation Army, but he, <clears throat> he loved to play on the organ and my dad was on the piano and they would, you know, those were the kind of friendships they had. And yet he was also the, uh, the politician, the pediatrician who inspired them 
you know, and, and was their, uh, their guiding light in this work. And, uh, and he went on to do other many great things in, in, this, in this world. My dad, like Dr. Kegler, presented it to both of them, but she was going to be the driving force behind it. She was Sunbeam Home. Uh, my dad, of course, was a big part of it too, but from a different aspect, you know, in terms of the maintenance and um, all the other stuff that went around it. He did a lot of the PR work. He'd go out in the evenings, um, drive wherever he had to, uh, to do, um, to promote the work. He had his projector and his screen and off he went. And that's how the support began to grow. And so, and that's how that became a community. Sunbeam was never really an entity on its own. With the help of medical professionals like Dr. Kegler and rapidly growing community support, Peter and Johanna were able to expand and move into 4 Willow Street. We, we lived upstairs. We had, um, my parents' bedroom was up there and my brothers all shared a room with two bunk beds and my sister and I had a room. We had to get up at six o'clock, get dressed and get ready for school. And then we, but we had to go downstairs and help feed the children their breakfast. But there were little children who were little toddlers and you know, they were running around and could play. And, and so those were the ones that we would help them feed breakfast. And um, that's why I think we felt like they were our brothers and sisters because they were part of our family. The home would become well known in the community. Christmas time was a favorite for the staff and children and for those who donated gifts. It was also the location of Sunbeam's annual Strawberry Social, an event that would go on to raise thousands of dollars over the years to help support operations. In 1958, the aptly named Annex was added. A fresh coat of paint and furniture donated from a home in Fergus meant that there was room for 20 more children. In 1961, Sunbeam did it again with a new property. After putting in a low offer, they learned that they were the new owners of a home in Conestogo. The community again would rally to help. And uh, there was no derelict farmhouse again. The, uh, my dad looking for a place. You see, the God was amazing in my dad's life. He would send people along my dad's path that were just there at the right time, at the right, for the right need to take care of things. My dad said, well, you know, it's, it's a lot of work and it's not really what I want, but I'll, I'll give you this much for it. It was like next to nothing. It was just basically just take it off your hands. But he never thought any more about it. He figured, well, this is going to be a waste of my time. But sure enough, I ended up buying this old farmstead in the middle of Conestoga. So here again, the Monday night community heard that this was happening. They all came by the droves and helped clean the place up. It was unbelievable. And volunteers came out of the woodwork on um, in the community in Conestogo. So we got a lot of really good friends up that area. In 1962, Sunbeam would purchase their 190-acre dune property, and they could finally build their first new home. They called it Sunbeam Lodge. Johanna can be seen here laying the building's cornerstone. A short time later, they would go on to acquire the original farmhouse, barn, and farming equipment. And my dad came home one day and he said, well, boys, tomorrow we start farming. And he just bought the farm here in Dune. The owner there was in a hospital and he was on his deathbed and this the brother didn't want to deal with anything. So my dad bought the farm, lock, stock and barrel, the whole thing. It was an old rundown place. It was really, really in bad shape. It was neglected for years and years. We had a contractor help us, built the whole barn up inside and we started looking I think there were 25 or 35 cows every day, twice a day. We had pigs, we had the whole bit going. Because the milk that we got from there went back to the home to supplement feeding these, these children. Because there were, back then we had like 300 kids to feed. The Voss's hard work and dedication went beyond the immense task of running the homes. They were involved in just so many things within the Kitchener-Waterloo community. I asked John if it was a strain on the family. And we sort of say, we hardly ever saw mom and dad, so 
how come we love them so much? Well, first of all, uh, they were they were uh, people that em the, 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 their spirit, their their intentions, their life, their values emanated from them. So you hang around someone long enough, you get to be like them a little bit. You don't have to have a lot of conversation, but you just you just you know you just learn from them in a in a in a very um, unique way. And that work ethic from my mom and dad, it's, uh, it's not genetic, you learn that. And we, uh, we all learned to work hard, but to serve people. In 1966, after Sunbeam would change to a nonprofit organization, it would seek to consolidate and move the children into a single location. Resurrection College on Kingsway Drive was purchased in 1971, and the new Sunbeam home was born. The bosses could finally look back at their efforts and feel confident their organization was in good hands. Johanna would retire in 1973 and Peter in 1975. They would spend time in Florida and stay involved with their family, extended families and the Salvation Army. They traveled and would make trips to their favorite destination. My mom and dad loved going to Israel and this was their fifth trip. And I remember when they were saying goodbye and my dad was telling, sharing with some people this premonition that he said, you know, I'm not coming back. He says, I, I don't think I'm going to come back, so you let, let's make this goodbye. One hour after that video was taken, Peter would suffer a fatal heart attack. One has to wonder if it's possible that Peter approached death as he did life, by doing it just the way he wanted to. His beloved Johanna would pass away in March 2001. My mom was the driving force and she was there. <laughs> and um, she was just a very well-loved person. I don't know anyone who knew her who didn't love her. The sadness of the passing of Peter and Johanna is overshadowed only by the legacy they left behind. In the 1970s and 80s, many more positive changes continued at Sunbeam. Dr. Kegler's model of having a decentralized location for the children was readopted. New programs were introduced that included physio and occupational therapy, developmental training, recreation, seating and dental clinics, a family resource center, and much more. Today, the organization continues to grow and now boasts 26 residential and respite locations across Waterloo Region. This year, Sunbeam celebrates 65 years of this community and improving our community. Here's to celebrating the past and looking forward to the future.